Hello and welcome to NDTV 24/7. I'm Rohit Wellington. Let's begin with our top story. Dramatic and unprecedented scenes played out on Friday in Ukraine that is battling an invasion by Russia. A nuclear power plant, Europe's largest, caught fire overnight after clashes. Media reports suggest that it was eventually taken over by the Russian armed forces. The power plant had caught fire as it came under shelling from Russian forces. Though the fire was later extinguished, the incident sparked worry that radiation could leak from the damaged power station. A dramatic firefight at a major nuclear power plant in Ukraine. A part of the plant catches fire. This video shared on Instagram from the official account of Ukrainian President Zelensky appeared to show blasts lighting up the night sky and sending up plumes of smoke. As Russia moved in to seize the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest, raising fears of major Chernobyl-like fallout. President Zelensky took to social media warning about the threat of a possible nuclear disaster. Europe зараз повинна прокинутися. Горить найбільша атомна станція Європи прямо зараз. Російські танки розстрілюють атомні блоки. Це танки обладнані тепловізорами, тобто вони знають, куди стріляють, вони до цього готували. It later emerged that the fire was extinguished and that no changes in radiation levels were reported at the plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency said all safety systems at the six nuclear units at the power plant are in place and there was no release of radioactivity. The physical integrity of the plant has been compromised with what uh, happened um, last night. So um, we, of course, are fortunate that there was no uh, release of radiation and that the um, integrity of the reactors in themselves was not compromised but yes the plant in a, in a wider sense but russia's move to attack a nuclear power plant has raised the stakes drawing global condemnation you mentioned uh, the uh, the reports of uh, of active shelling of uh, nuclear sites in Ukraine. That just seeks to that just seems to me to absolutely reinforce uh, the complete breach of any aspects of international law and all aspects of international law that apply here of the UN Charter, uh, and to reinforce the unlawful behaviour that uh, that President Putin is engaged in. Russia now has control of the plant as the Ukraine and the world waits on edge for Putin's next move. Bureau Report, NDTV. Meanwhile, in the capital city of Kiev, the streets are deserted. The locals are living in fear of being hit by Russian bombs. Here's a ground report. These are the empty streets of Kiev, like the worst apocalyptic film. Locals are in fear they could be hit by a Russian bombs or shot by Russian saboteurs. So far, sirens are sounding almost continuously and it's very dangerous to be on the streets. The enemy is attacking the entire civilian population of the country. During the night over Kyiv, the Ukrainian military eliminated missiles in the air. And this night was on the verge of an ecological catastrophe and another sleepless night in Ukraine. Russian occupation forces fired the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant at midnight. If it explodes, it will be 10 times stronger than Chernobyl explosion in 1986. Unfortunately, the invaders seized the power plant. But the staff continue to work on power units and take control of it. Ukraine asked West to close sky about nuclear sites aimed Russia. That's the only way to stop the escalation. And it's time for Western partners to take responsibility for ending this war, Ukraine president said. After all, the main intention of Russia is to increase missile and air strikes on civilian infrastructure, large cities and civilians. And it seems that Putin plans to destroy not only Ukraine and its people, he wants to destroy 
the planet because he's not afraid even shelling nuclear power plant and this is a danger for the whole world. Especially for NDTV, Natalie Lutsenko, ICTV station, Kyiv. Indian medical students stranded at the Sumi State University on Friday issued a desperate plea for help, saying that they were trapped in their hostels without much food or water while there was gunfire, shelling and freezing temperature outside. हम लोग सारे सुमी में फंसे हुए हैं स्टार्टिंग से इधर अभी तो कोई रेस्क्यू एक भी स्टूडेंट की रेस्क्यू नहीं की गई है यहाँ से और यहाँ पे रोज रोज बम धमाके हो रहे हैं कल रात में भी बहुत बड़ी बम धमाके हुई थी यहाँ पे कल रात से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी गायब थी दो चार घंटे के लिए कल रात से पानी गायब है यहाँ पे हम लोग कल कल का कल का खाए हुए कल रात में ही खाए यहाँ से बॉर्डर जो है काफी दूर है यहाँ से अगर हम खारकी होते हुए अगर जाते भी है तो यहाँ से खारकी कम से कम जाने में चार पांच घंटे लगेंगे यहाँ से क्यू जाने में चार पांच घंटे लगेंगे फिर वहां से हमको गांव होकर के फिर फिर हमको बॉर्डर तक हंगरी बॉर्डर तक पहुंचना पड़ेगा जो कि वहां से भी खारकी से एक किलोमीटर है दस से बारह घंटे लगेंगे खारकी से बॉर्डर जाने में न ही रेलवे की कोई फैसिलिटीज है रेलवे रेलवे डिस्ट्रॉय है फैसिलिटीज ट्रांसपोर्टिंग की नहीं है स्टार्टिंग से हम लोग के लिए कुछ नहीं किया जा रहा है कुछ बच्चे निकले थे नाइजीरियन कुछ कुछ फॉरनर बच्चे निकले थे जो कि रास्ते में ही उनको शूट कर दिया गया जो कि हम लोगों के पास वीडियोस भी पड़ी हुई है इस डर से इंडियन से एक भी बच्चा एक भी बच्चा नहीं निकला अभी तक यहां से नहीं जा रहा है गवर्नमेंट का वेट कर रहा है कि गवर्नमेंट हम लोगों की हेल्प करेगी बट अभी तक गवर्नमेंट का अभी तक हम लोगों के हम लोगों के लिए कुछ अभी तक कोई इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं आई है कुछ कह रहे हैं बसेस खड़ी हुई है बट बसेस खड़ी करने से नहीं होगी रशियन बॉर्डर पे रशिया बॉर्डर ही हम लोग के हम लोग के सिर्फ करीब है यहां से 20 से 25 मिनट टाइम लगेगा रशिया बॉर्डर पहुंचने में बट रशिया बॉर्डर पे खड़ी करने से नहीं होगी हम लोग सुमी में फंसे हुए हैं At least 1,000 Indians, 700 in Sumy and 300 in Kharkiv are still stranded in conflict zones in eastern Ukraine. That's what the government said on Friday, adding that arranging buses to evacuate them was proving to be the biggest challenge right now. Plans are there. This is the core issue. A, a ceasefire, local ceasefire, alternative. We've been asking both sides. Alternatively, some mechanism under which either of the sides could organize transport. Probably less than thousand overall in the country, other than the east who are stuck and this Pisochin, leaving aside Pisochin, um, you know, Kharkiv and Sumy, maybe around a thousand or so who would want to, maybe less because look, twenty thousand plus have crossed over. Indian student Harjot Singh was shot multiple times while trying to escape from Ukraine capital Kiev in a cab last week and suffered a fractured leg. He lay on the road, wounded for hours, until an ambulance took him to hospital. I opened my eyes and found myself in the hospital, Harjot Singh told NDTV from the Kiev city hospital. Eager to go home and meet his family, he is waiting to be moved out of Ukraine, but says that his conversations with officials have been frustrating so far. When I go to the platform about to board, they will be the um, army and everyone. They don't allow Indians to board the in the train. Then after that, I, meet, I, I was meet with a few guys, and uh, we discuss and uh, uh, prefer to go by car, and we hired a taxi. It uh, maybe it was uh, AK-47. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, properly, but I can hear the voice that uh, many people can fire. Man, many people was firing on us, and one bullet was in my chest from this side. My mom, family, all. They all cry when they saw my face like this, because this is unexpected, man. Why my one leg is totally fractured? I can't run, I can't walk. So I need a facility that if someone took me from the airport, uh, from the hospital to Lviv city, then there is no problem, man. But this they said uh, you you should come on that place. After that you will be. After that we will think about. That we take you from there, then you do. But like all the things, you can say that like fake comments. बहुत बच्चा फंसा हुआ है. ये सिर्फ एक कोई एक हरजोत सिंह की बात नहीं है. ऐसे बड़े हरजोत फंसे हुए हैं मैं. तभी मैं उस दिन से continuously embassy से बात कर रहा हूँ कि सर आप provide करवाइए facility facility कुछ तो करवाइए. आप लोग तो हमसे पहले जाके बैठ गए हैं लवीन में. और जबकि embassy का मतलब क्या होता है पहले अपने बंदों को देखना. 
And NETV spoke to Harjot Singh's family as well, who are very anxious about his safety and requested the government help to get him home soon. Four days ago, his phone didn't come. तो उसके बाद परसों दोपहर को उसका फोन आया फिर उसने बताया कि मुझे ऐसे करके मम्मी गोलियां लगी हैं तो वो उस टाइम हॉस्पिटल में था तो क्योंकि गोलियां लगने के बाद वो चार दिन के बाद उसको होश आया वो होश ही उसको हॉस्पिटल में आके आया तो फिर उसने परसों हमें फोन करके बताया कि मैं ऐसे ऐसे करके बैठा हूँ तो उसको चार गोलियां लगी हैं एक उसका पैर मेरे ख्याल टूटा है प्लस्तर चढ़ा हुआ है चिंता तो हमें बहुत होगी थी भाई क्यों फोन नहीं कर रहा है तो टीवी में देखते थे कि लड़ाई लग गई है तो हम ये सोच रहे थे कि चलो ठीक है हमारा लड़का सुरक्षित है कहीं भी है बहुत चिंता थी हम तो सारा दिन रात के एक एक डेढ़ बजे तक टीवी लगा के बैठते थे एनडीडी भी लगाना और उसमें रिपोर्ट देखते रहते थे भाई क्या हो रहा क्या हो रहा मेरा बच्चा तो ठीक है मेरे को तकलीफ है मेरा बेटा है मैं कहूँ तो जिन बाहों के बेटे बाहर हैं सबको सही सलामत उनको यहाँ वापस पहुँचाया जाए The government has said that it will pay the medical costs and help evacuate Harjot Singh. Harjot Singh ji ke baare mein jaise maine kaha hamari embassy unke contact mein hai aur wo abhi koi hospital mein hai ki hum khabar karne ki koshish kar rahe hain exactly wo sthiti kaisi hai kahan pe hai unko hilaya ja sakta hai ya nahi aur hamari embassy team bhi wahan jaane ki thodi koshish kar rahi hai jo abhi bahar hai Kiev ke par wahan bhi conflict zone mein thoda thodi dikkat hoti hai pata nahi ja payenge ya nahi और तब तक हम तो हमारी और हम जो उनके ट्रीटमेंट के बारे में गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया पूरा खर्चा लेगी उसका और अभी सबसे ज़्यादा हमारा प्रायोरिटी है कि उनको पूरी मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट मिले जो ज़रूरी है फिर देखते हैं अभी वो हॉस्पिटल में है अभी सेफ है Now uh, to an NDTV exclusive the head of US mission to India Patricia Lucina has told NDTV that the US does not believe that India is in Russia's camp on the Ukraine war So the news website Axios reports that the US government had actually issued but later withdrawn a cable sent to diplomats in India and Saudi Arabia saying that their neutrality as in India's and Saudi Arabia's neutrality places them in Russia's camp. Can this be confirmed or denied? That was, was such a key, was such a was cable, a cable sent? Yes. Oh, I thought you were going to ask me if we believe that India is in Russia's camp. Well, that that was a follow-up question, but <laughs> was such a cable sent and then withdrawn? I actually have only the same reporting that you have from Axios so I I don't personally know that mm -hmm. but what I will tell you is that the United States does not believe that India is in Russia's camp. Okay now shifting focus to elections on the penultimate day of the campaigning for the UP elections all roads led to Varanasi Prime Minister Modi, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav all led their campaigns in the city. Sanket Upadhyay reports. Today, Varanasi mein Battle of the Road Shows ho rahi hai. Har taraf road show. Ek taraf road show प्रियंका और राहुल गांधी का दूसरी तरफ रोड शो अखिलेश यादव का और अब एक रोड शो प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी का क्या इससे फर्क पड़ेगा भारतीय जनता पार्टी के पक्ष में यहां पर पिछली बार 2017 में बीजेपी ने बहुत ही जबरदस्त प्रदर्शन दिखाया था यहां पर जितनी विधानसभा क्षेत्र हैं आठ हैं उन आठ में से आठों बीजेपी के जो घटक दल हैं और बीजेपी उनको गई थी लेकिन इस बार स्थानीय जो विधायक हैं विधायक के प्रत्याशी हैं उनके खिलाफ गुस्सा है रोष है जैसे कि आप देख सकते हैं प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी द्वारा एक प्रयास किया जा रहा है कि कम से कम उनका जो गृह क्षेत्र है जहां से वो खुद सांसद हैं वहां पर प्रदर्शन गड़बड़ ना हो स्थानीय नेताओं के खिलाफ और जिस तरीके से समाजवादी पार्टी और, और, और अन्य जो दल हैं वो लगातार सवाल उठा रहे हैं बेरोजगारी का वो तमाम सवाल उठा रहे हैं सांड के मुद्दे हैं और बहुत सारे मुद्दे हैं जो कि इस चुनाव में हावी हैं क्या इस रोड शो के माध्यम से एक संदेश दिया जा रहा है वाराणसी में कि गढ़ को मजबूती से पूर्वांचल के गढ़ को मजबूती से बचाया जा सके उसामा शाह और सचिन गुप्ता के साथ संकेत उपाध्याय एन डी टी So in a day of road shows right here in Varanasi we first saw Rahul and Priyanka then the prime minister and in a late night road show amid the fireworks this is Akhilesh Yadav's rath 
which is pulling in. Massive crowds right here on the streets of Varanasi with fireworks in the sky and a sea of support on the ground with Akhilesh Yadav's Rath. He is meeting and greeting people. As you can see, many following him. This is a little distance away from Budolia Chowk and the Kashi Vishwanath Temple. And the, on the other side, you can just imagine by just looking at this frame, the number of people who are present here. A massive, massive gathering of Samajwadi Party supporters. But you know, the most important question as Akhilesh Yadav and his Rath, the Samajwadi Rath, pulls into Varanasi, a BJP stronghold. The most important question is whether Akhilesh Yadav can convert this sea of support into votes. Remember, as we said, Varanasi has been, Varanasi city at least has been a BJP stronghold, but the remaining constituencies have not. Akhilesh Yadav hopes that anti incumbency will reach a situation where he can convince the voters to vote for him. Can he do it? Or will the BJP be successful? With Osama Shah and Sachin Gupta, Sanket Upadhyay for NDTV. In some other news, a massive fire engulfed Bone and Joints Hospital in Srinagar. Officials say that patients admitted in the hospital have been rescued, but all the equipment in the hospital have been destroyed in the fire. Fire erupted in the 250-bed hospital late uh, on Friday evening and engulfed the entire hospital. And with that, it's a wrap on this bulletin from the entire team. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.